Oh my goodness, can you believe it? It is time for some more goth thrifting, finding some good deals, some spooky things. This is Gothcast. I'm Dr. Sanders, and I'm excited to bring you some videos where I walk around, find things for a price that is not normally what they would go for if they were brand new at buildings and establishments that sell those products in a used capacity. That's right, it's goth thrifting. And, uh, you know, this time, actually, it's, it's going to be weird because a lot of this footage was shot before a particular event that has categorically taken over all media outlets this year. That's right, it was before all the craziness. I think some of it was also through earlier this year when, you know, people started wearing masks and everything like that. But found some pretty cool stuff, some really amazing things this time. In fact, some things I was totally surprised to even find at a thrift store. Well, let's just go. Let's just walk right into this episode right here. So what we're going to see is a whole bunch of different trips mashed together inside of this particular thing. I tried to go in chronological order. I believe we're starting with a Goodwill in Everett. But this is John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness from 1987. Not one of his best movies in my opinion. More spiritual. But it does have Alice Cooper playing... A crazy maniac killer, which is neat. And this is Return to Oz on DVD, the really cool adaptation of the second and third books. Well, it's kind of like a mash together, second and third books of the Oz books. I'm a huge fan of the Oz series. And uh, yeah, that's a really good, dark Disney film from the 80s, which is awesome. We also have these Buffy the Vampire Slayer novels and the Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The Watcher's Guide just in case you needed a, a guide to watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer in the late 90s and early 2000s. Science fiction, what it's all about. If you want to know what science fiction is all about, this is the book for you, apparently. This is another Goodwill. And yeah, this is like I said, this is before all of the mask wearing and restrictions on that, at least at the time of recording this voiceover. So it's kind of weird to see footage from back then. So this CD can pretty much be exclusively traced to Gothcast existing right now and you listening to this because this is a tribute to Black Sabbath and Typo Negative is actually included on this, covering this on Black Sabbath. And so way back when, in the early internet, there were these fan sites that were just like little things made by fans that were different than the official band websites this is before YouTube or anything like that where you could pull up music videos so easily, there was actually somebody who reviewed Typo Negative's cover of Black Sabbath and said it was like Sisters of Mercy. And so I wrote that down on like a little notepad. And then when I went to Amoeba Music in Hollywood, I bought Sisters of Mercy first and last and always and fell in love with goth music. Of course, I already like Typo Negative, which is like spooky music, but Sisters of Mercy was like the first real goth band that I just fell in love with. And uh, it was all because of the CD. because. Somebody wrote a review of one of the songs on this album. So this CD can almost exclusively be blamed for you watching this video right now. How weird is that? By the way, cool art on this. And then we have Rob Zombie's Educated Horses. Again, not really a goth album, but an album I think is very good. Different kind of sound for him. And uh, yeah, No Dreads. This is the No Dread Rob Zombie. And then we have The Vampire Files, Blood Circle by Peon Elrod. There's like a whole bunch of books in this series and they're kind of like detective vampire books. And so I thought I would include in here because it's uh, that's interesting. And then I thought I'd show off the different covers of Stephen King books like I usually do. Here's Christine. I do not like this cover at all. I get what they were going for, but I, uh, I don't like it. And then we have Misery. I mean, it's okay cover, I guess. Still, I think the movie is so horrifying. The Shining, I don't like this cover at all. Great book, though, and I like how it has an excerpt for Dr. Sleep. The book is actually really good, and I actually, you know, I like the movie. I know a lot of people rag on the movie and the book, but I actually like what the movie did, too, as well, and adapting it. Is Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere. This is actually adapted into both a graphic novel and a show, which are both really good. It's a good story, and if you want some different kind of Neil Gaiman, other than, like, American Gods or Sandman or Coraline, then it's pretty good. Zombies Calling. This is, like, a graphic novel comic book type thing. I mean, it looked kind of neat to me. 
I didn't actually buy this, and I thought I would just include it here just in case it looked interesting to you. It's like Scott Pilgrim kind of looking art. Then we have Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. What a classic book. This is just awesome graphic novel, and you know, I like that quote by Stephen King on the back, but Frank Miller is absolutely awesome, and this is one of the most classic Batman stories of all time. This is also adapted into an animated film, which is also really good. Uh, Bone, there's a lot, there was a lot of this comic Bone there, along with some Hellboy stuff, but I don't know, I just have never really read Bone. I actually bought a few of these, so maybe I should read them at some point, but yeah, whoever was a big fan of Bone apparently was just over it, I guess. And then, surprisingly, I couldn't even believe it when I found it, but there was all of Lenore here, there was Gloom Cookie, Bear, which I never actually heard of. And also, The Sandman King of Dreams, the book by Alyssa Quitney. I think that's how you say that. And this was originally published in 1997, and it goes over the creation of the Sandman comic book, which is so insane. Like, I don't know why these were all here. I think maybe somebody was into spooky comics at some point, and then just maybe they lost interest or whatever. But yeah, this was all in one place, like all in one area, which is awesome. So I just totally lucked out. We have Dolores Claiborne, another great story and book and also needful things right there. I thought this was cool. Of course, I always like to show off these covers of Dracula because it just gets so weird how so many different versions of Dracula. This one's one of the more boring ones. It doesn't even really look like a vampire. It just looks like a like a woman and a guy. Like Not really that exciting. I'm pretty sure this is one of the first versions I ever read of Frankenstein. I think it is. So I don't know if it's the exact edition, but I remember that cover very well. This is also Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Again, I've recommended this a whole bunch of times before. Great series. The second book I wasn't so hot on, but I mean, for all ages, I think that first book is pretty good. The movie was terrible though. This is a book called My Favorite Fangs, which is apparently an undead spinoff of The Sound of Music, which has really mediocre to terrible reviews online. So that's awesome. I like how there's a review from NPR on the back. This is like a like Dr. Elmo, I don't even know what any of this is on this CD, but this is just a lot of really strange songs on this CD, but yeah, Grandma just wrote over via broomstick. This is another thrift store I went to called St. Vincent de Paul. I think there's a whole bunch of these. This particular one was pretty terrible. Uh, I mean, just as far as, I mean, location, I mean, just everything about it was uh, unpleasant, but here's what I found there. A whole bunch of true blood. I always think it's funny because that just fandom is just totally dead now. It's so weird. Like, that was a huge show way back in the day. I have like a million copies of Labyrinth, so I do not need this, but it's always cool to see that it is out there. It's probably one of the most popular things on DVD ever. This is also Alice in Wonderland, the Tim Burton Giant Depp one, which is not held in high regard. Even at the time it wasn't, but nowadays it seems like it's really not held in high regard. I didn't see a sequel either, but man, I, don't, I just don't, I don't understand what they did with this. Great, great book though. The Crow, Wicked Prayer. This is the fourth Crow movie. It also features Edward Furlong, the kid from Terminator 2. It's probably how most people know him. He's in a whole bunch of stuff, but yeah, this movie, I remember being terrible. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but gosh, just horrible. This is The Addams Family, the first one, the one I just reviewed actually on VHS. And this is weird because I believe this is the one that you got in McDonald's. So it's crazy. I, I believe there's some kind of promotion where you could get a VHS of the Adams Family from McDonald's. So that's kind of neat. This is Blade Runner and The Crow on VHS. I have that Blade Runner one, and I believe I have The Crow as well on VHS, but these are really cool. Blade Runner is my favorite movie of all time, just the best. And The Crow, of course, is amazing. I think it's funny they had the original Crow on VHS and then they had the fourth one on DVD. Final Destination 2, you can't cheat death twice. Packaging for it, it's cool. A wild ride. This is the, Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. People forget that Tim Burton directed a Planet of the Apes film. Who boy, it was terrible. Monster High, Ghoul's Rule. Never seen this, but I've heard a lot of people who watch my content seem to enjoy Monster High to some degree. Then I decided to check out Vortex Music and Movies. Yeah, this was kind of a you know record store, and they had DVDs and just like a music shop and. A lot of different stuff. It's, it was very cramped in there the last time I was in there. Like I said, this is probably like 2019, I want to say, late 2019. But yeah, I didn't find much in there. There was some cool DVDs, though. 
going over to a value village to see what they got. Got this, it's like one of those kind of like activity books, things, vampires, terrifying lost journal of Dr. Cornelius Van Helsing. Just had like some activities and just some little neat things in there, but uh, I did not pick it up. It's a very big book. The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy and Other Stories. This is published out of 1997 and it's awesome. I have lost my copy of this so many times that I was very happy to actually find it. And a lot of times you find it without the dust cover on it. So yeah, I picked this up. This is like some poetry and little drawings done by Tim Burton. It's just cool. You know, if you like him, then you'll probably like this. Invader Zim, something people have been requesting for me to review for a long time. I just haven't yet. Yeah, because especially I did John the Homicide Maniac and people love my review of that. So I think people are wondering what I think of Joan Vasquez's other stuff. Yeah, maybe one day. Queen of the Damned, have some opinions on that movie. And also Frogs. I can't believe I didn't buy this. Today the pond, tomorrow the world. And look at The Crow on DVD. By the way, I, like I said, I already have The Crow on Blu-ray and I believe VHS as well, so I don't need that DVD. And what the heck? Planet of the Apes again? What What is happening in this episode? The, by the way, this is the original one. This is Kindred the Embraced which actually is a TV show that's based on Vampire the Masquerade, which is a neat oddity. I bet most people didn't even know that there was a TV show as it was super short-lived, but here it is. And look at this. This is a really cool Dawn of the Dead thing. This is a Dawn of the Dead, the director's cut version of it. It's on VHS, of course, but I thought it had a really cool kind of looking box for VHS. And look at this. Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School, one of my favorites awesome i just like the 80s ones for scooby-doo like those 80s movies the reluctant werewolf i think is also pretty cool so yeah i got his website on the back i'm just gonna take a second to defend this book i thought i would this is hitchhiker's guy of the galaxy part six of three and another thing i'm just doing this because i love this book series this was written by owen colfer great author and i think this is actually a great continuation of the series and it was not done by douglas adams who obviously passed away after the fifth book, I thought I would say I like this book a lot. So, yeah. Oh my goodness. Isn't it crazy what you can find in thrift stores sometimes? I'm really amazed by that sometimes. And uh, this was no exception. But, you know, it is another amazing discovery you can make for yourself. And actually, it's a really great deal. It's that you can get the Dr. Sanders Patch Overlap album on cassette. And you may be saying, that's crazy. Well... You're probably right in that description of me. Probably people would agree with that. Anyway, yes, I did release an album, and it's got 10 great songs. You can listen on Spotify, Bandcamp, Apple Music. I think pretty much anywhere music is available. And you can buy the album on cassette. You can get Dr. Sanders t-shirts. That's right. I finally have merch. After a million years, I finally made some merch. Get stickers and buttons, all that stuff. But anyway, I'm just glad that everybody seems to enjoy the goth thrifting videos quite a bit. Heck, I like making them. Although, of course, with the circumstances lately, it's a little bit harder to make them and to just find some of the stuff out there right now. It's just, you know, harder to justify going out and searching for things at the moment. But I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned. You can hit the subscribe bell to like the comment notifications. Anyway. Make sure to stay spooky. Where am I going? I don't even know.